All right. So it's great to have uh, Professor Yeonun Kim, who is currently at Gachin University and will soon move to Seoul Tech. Uh, He's going to talk about um, Bayesian system identif identifications and online learning of LQR. Please, Yeonun. Uh, thank, uh, thank you for in, uh, introduction and inviting me to this uh, seminar. So uh, let me try to uh, pop up this screen here. Uh, it still shows uh, shows your face, I think. So, oh. so I think it's better to hide this thing. Oh, <laughs> what's going on here? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not that uh, expert in using uh, iPad too. Yeah. So, I'm sorry. So, uh, in today's presentation, uh, uh, I'll talk about a uh, Bayesian system identification uh, and online learning of LQR, which are quite uh, classical problems in the field of electrical engineering and and uh, some machine learning community. And these works are based on joint work with uh, Kiyun Kim and In Sun Yang. Kiyun Kim is a student of In Sun Yang, and In Sun Yang is a my postdoc mentor. Well, I was a postdoc mentor. So before introducing the uh, problem, uh, let me quickly remind you of uh, optimal control problem defined in discrete regime. So uh, starting with, uh, uh, let us start with the deterministic optimal uh, discrete time uh, optimal control problem, which is given by uh, this form. So X of T uh, is, uh, is a n-dimensional vector and U of T is a con uh, con control action uh, lying in uh, m-dimensional space. At the same time, the, the, uh, we, we usually call A and B system parameters, which lie in, uh, uh, which are n by n matrix and uh, n by n matrix respectively. So uh, starting with the initial point x of zero, at, uh, you usually let the trajectory start from the origin. And our goal in this problem is to determine uh, optimal control, uh, control actions, the sequence of control action ut that minimizes the cost defined in this form. So here, uh, QN, QR, and QF are usually assumed to be positive definite matrix. So the energy is quadratic. So uh, the optimal uh, the optimization problem is formulated in uh, this form. So the first part uh, corresponds to stage cost, while the second part um, uh, uh, is regarded as a terminal cost. Uh, there are two approaches for solving uh, that optimization problem. So writing all state in uh, recursive form, uh, we have this large system of equation. So it might look, uh, it might look very small system, but uh, if a uh, state vector lies in a high dimensional space, then this system is very high dimensional problem so that uh, it's not tractable computationally. Furthermore, there is another issue of um, such a uh, such a formulation, uh, which is once we have a uh, error in the measurement, for example in x two, then this error is uh, accumulated uh, when we find the state uh, the the state uh, after time two. So that is why we need a recursive approach uh, instead of non recursive approach like this. Uh, and I believe that uh, uh, maybe uh, many of you are familiar with this formulation that is actually the heart of our uh, community Bellman's equation. So using uh, the, uh, the idea of uh, dynamic programming principle is quite useful uh, in, uh, when, when solving such an optimization problem. So as usual, uh, like we did for in, in the continuous regime, uh, we define the uh, value function um, uh, in, this, uh, in this form. Uh, that means that uh, we let the trajectory starts at uh, x of t uh, with state z. 
and let it go up to uh, x sub large n, and we measure the optimal cost, optimal cost cost uh, along along the way, meaning that uh, we want we seek for the sequence of control action u of t up to u of sub u u sub uh, large n minus one. Uh, uh, what you can find easily is that uh, when you plug large n into t, we you simply get a uh, z transpose to uh, z transpose times q f times z, which is quadratic in z. And uh, looking at the next line, uh, we can split the value function into two optimization problems, so that uh, uh, the recursive relation uh, will uh, will uh, will pop up. So going to the last line, we have the uh, the recursive relation between the value function at t and the value function at t plus one. So uh, furthermore, since uh, the terminal val term the value function at terminal time large n is quadratic, so that we can easily infer that uh, we uh, the value function will. Uh, take the form of quadratic function like this. So uh, plug that quadratic uh, ansatz function back to the, uh, the, the recursive relation or the Bellman's equation. Uh, we, uh, we derive the following uh, the relation. Uh, so uh, the, uh, and then we uh, solving for u, uh, we get the optimal control action uh, in terms of the state and this this uh, uh, we uh, this part which is usually denoted by large k of t is often called control gain matrix so so I'm actually quite uh, wondering that if uh, the mathematicians working on optimal control problems particularly in continuous regime uh, are familiar with uh, uh, the LQR formulation and uh, Riccati equation, something like that. So that is, uh, so are you? Yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I think that the, the LQR mm -hmm. and Riccati equations, um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, as you say, are uh, very uh, standard and important tools for, for this sort of problem. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I think as you said, uh, for those in the audience, this is exactly the, um, uh, dynamic programming principle, right? Exactly. Yeah. Can you explain to everyone mm -hmm. that you take like Q that is just non-negative definite, but why did you need R to be positive definite? Uh, uh there's actually uh, no particular reason um uh, for requiring uh R to be positive definite. So it can be uh positive semi-definite as well. Mm. So if if it's neg uh positive, so the, re the only reason why we enforce you to be positive definite is we we really need, uh, need to take uh take the cost incurred by choosing control action into account mm. yeah and 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 maybe also for the mm -hmm. students and everyone in the room can you explain mm -hmm. i mean that that the, the that what you mentioned here like uh you know, it's clear, but what is the difference in the row of Z and U in this formulation that I mean, like... Ah, uh, oh yeah, sure. So Z, so this, so so here, uh, the, the, the second line is just uh, the reformulation or just, uh, yeah, just, they, they just have different uh, formulations. So we can uh, rewrite the, rewrite that into the second, second line. So Z is a state, uh, denotes the state, and U is the control action uh, we need to determine. So the the the, the second uh, the second line uh, is a, a optimization problem for a quadratic uh, quadratic function with respect to U. You can or you can solve for U, and that U uh, turns out to uh, U is denoted by U sub optimal opti uh, optimum, uh, and it's it can be written in terms of B P and uh, A and Z uh, in, uh, like that. So that means that the control action at the optimal control action at certain state is defined by, uh, is determined by the current state. Uh, 
therefore the con the optimal value uh is the uh is uh can be written like this but uh this um i think that's not that critical part so uh since uh that's uh, since uh recalling the vt uh, is assumed to have the form uh z time uh, z transpose times pt times z so now we have the recursive relation with respect to pt and pt plus one so that is how you can solve for uh, the optimization problem uh, recursively. Uh, the great uh, the advantage of this formulation is that, so once you start from X sub zero, uh, you can determine the optimal action uh, using the control, uh, uh, the, the control gain matrix uh, K, uh, K, K, K zero, oh, I'm sorry, K zero, X zero. So that either move uh, uh, x0 to a different point like x1. But in the real world problem, there's a possibility of the, uh, the uh, having error in the measurement of x1. So if we are unlucky so that we have the very wrong measurement like that, x1 tilde, then, or then the control action is, uh, since the control action is de determined by the Optimal control action minimizing the cost in the future is determined by the current state. So, so, so uh, we can expect the the we can expect that the error is not accumulated. Uh, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> unlike the the unlike the uh, recur uh, non recursive approach. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> in summary, <clears throat> I'm sorry, we have the recursive relation for uh. P of T and then uh, at the end of the day, we can determine the optimal control game matrix K of T. And based on that optimal control game, uh, control game matrix, we can determine the optimal control action at each T X of T. Uh, and now let us move on to stochastic LQR, uh, which involves the disturbance denoted by w, WT. And WT is assumed to have the covariance, uh, the covariance sigma, which is also M by M matrix. For stochastic LQR problem, um, uh, uh, we take expectation in the cost for, uh, to define the cost. And the expectation is uh, uh, taken over all noises. And, uh, and similar uh, similar to deterministic case, uh, we uh, we look for a sequence of uh, control actions uh, up to time m minus one, minimizing the cost of both. Uh, the since the flow line is quite uh, similar, or I would say same, uh, I uh, skip this part and then. Uh, uh, at the uh, I just mentioned that uh, we get a similar recursive relation for P of T and K of T uh, control gain matrix, uh, like the like we had in determinist case. So uh, let us uh, uh, describe uh, uh, demonstrate quick summary for optimal cost. So. For finite horizon, uh, so there is a difference between a finite horizon problem and infinite horizon problem. So in infinite horizon problem, we normally take the average of the cost. Uh, as we saw, uh, the, the first table uh, says that in, for cumulative, uh, the cumulative cost, um, in determinist case, the, the, fi the optimal uh, finite horizon cost, a uh, cost for finite horizon problem is given by uh, this, as you saw. And then this can be naturally uh, extended to the stochastic case for the finite horizon problem. Uh, on the other hand, if there is no guarantee that uh, if X, uh, the state trajectory blows up, then Infinite horizon problem, even for deterministic case, deterministic uh, LQR problem, uh, will have um, infinite uh, infinite cost. However, uh, uh, we generally assume that uh, we usually assume that uh, the the system is stabilizable, which means that uh, there is a control gain matrix. 
So there's a control gain matrix K of T or K K such that uh, A X plus B U, which is determined by uh, written as B. Uh, U is determined by control gain matrix as state. So K uh, X. And this can be written as A plus B K X. So if a control gain matrix, the spectral radius for A plus B K is less than, uh, is, it has a neg, uh, it, if, if the spectral radius of A plus B K is strictly less than one, then we can expect that the state trajectory uh, converges to converges to the origin uh, eventually. And under that assumption, uh, the, the infinite horizon cost for determining the QR is given by Z transpose T, P times P times Z, or um, the initial, initial point Z. For in, uh, infinite horizon problem in stochastic LQR, uh, uh, the cumulative cost for uh, infinite horizon stochastic LQR problem is definitely infinity because of the, the, the noise, either never uh, converges to zero, no matter how it did, how it how uh, no matter uh, no matter the type of AM uh, the system parameters because of the disturbance. Uh, <clears throat> and the cost uh, is given by uh, given in the far uh, in the in the second table for each case. So. So for infinite horizon, uh, uh, there's a, there's an interesting property in infinite infinite horizon uh, LQ, stochastic LQR problem. So the the theorem uh, in the slide is quite uh, a a classical uh, result by uh, in control control community. So the due to the time constraint, um, I uh, I will uh, skip explaining uh, skip the the the, the the, the exact def, uh, definition of uh, controllability and observability, uh, which can be found, uh, I believe, mm, in uh, Evans, uh, maybe, or uh, a, uh, any control uh, theory book. So uh, if uh, A and B, uh, the system parameter pair, A and B is controllable, and A, a and square root of Q is observable, then, uh, then uh, there exists positive definite matrix P such that uh, the, 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 the sequence P of T, which, which was in, uh, introduced in the previous slide, uh, converges to that P solving the so-called Riccardi equation uh, there. Uh, for such a P, uh, in, for such a P solving the Riccati equation, we can define K uh, like this. So, so um, the optimal average cost is just decide, uh, determined by applying control action, uh, control gain matrix at each state. So, so starting with X zero, we apply control gain matrix to uh, the current state and obtain control action U0 and we arrive at the next state. And then the next state is, uh, next state X2 is achieved by applying the control action U1 defined, determined by K times X sub one. And we can do it uh, forever and the cost incurred by um, choosing such a sequence of optimal, uh, such a sequence of control action uh, is finite and given by P uh, trace of P uh, sigma is our optimal control action. So the important thing, so I, the, the, the one thing I uh, want you to uh, um, remember is the control action. Control action is, decide, uh, is determined by control gain matrix K. And this will give us um, a nice story uh, for obtaining the 
uh, optimal cost. So I think uh, this is a quite um, uh, quick uh, uh, review of actual classical actual theory, and let me move on to uh, system uh, identification problem. So. We, are, we still consider a uh, stochastic error problem given by a, uh, two system parameters, A star and B star, which are, made, uh, 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 which are no, um, uh, matrices. And noise system, uh, system noise is usually assumed to be Gaussian, but, uh, but mm, um, there, there have been many attempts to uh, extend uh, to, to, to the different type of noises. And, and the type of noise actually uh, affects the analysis of uh, problems in LQR um, a, a lot. So in uh, system identification problem, uh, we don't really know what A star and B star are. So what the, the, info, the only information, so let, let's just say we apply some control actions you want to up to some up to some time large t, and let us say these control actions are known. So that all that just means that we uh, try a bunch of different control controller uh, control actions to the system. Then as a result, we observe the trajectory. So then the problem is to find. Uh, a star and B star. This problem uh, might sound quite weird, but it has a wide variety of applications, such as um, uh, the controlling autonomous vehicle. So the when you uh, in autonomous vehicle, uh, when you steer the steering, then then uh, then uh, then the car will change the direction. But the 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 level of the level of the the the, the how the how even with different level of steering, that will uh, result in different motions depending on the condition of road, or the condition of the the car or type of car or the condition of tire. So there must be a um, dynamics determining uh, such a phenomena but the parameters will, will change depending on the condition. So what we only have is control action. So how much we steer and, and the state, which uh, this demonstrates the motion of the car. Then, then the problem is to determine the, uh, the unknown parameters for kinematics determining this, this dynamics. Can, can I clarify here a bit, Yanan? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, this is great. I, um, so uh, you have mm -hmm. A star and B star, but I mean, in this given condition, then A star and B star are, are constant matrices, right? Yeah, yeah. Not time variant. Uh, it's time invariant ma matrices. Will you, you, you mean that it could be dependent on time as well? Or? Uh, yeah, it can depend. It can it, it can depend on time as well. But mm -hmm. uh, that uh, we in this uh, in this uh, work work uh, we consider time invariant matrices, yeah. which is the simplest case we can consider in LQR problem. Yes, and then the second mm -hmm. naive question is that when you choose mm -hmm. the the control you want up to ut, uh, uh, mm -hmm. to, for the learning problem you don't need them to be optimal optimal controls, right? It can be any sort of control. Uh, that's actually a, a really good question in a sense that in system identification problem, uh, we don't really want uh, UI to be optimal. But for online learning problem, which involve the regret, which measures the difference between the current cost incurred by the action we choose and the optimal cost, uh, we definitely need to consider the optimality of UI. But the, 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 in this current problem, which is offline, which is sometimes called offline system identification problem, we don't really uh, just choose um, UI to be optimal. Instead, we choose UI to be uh, actions that can give us uh, efficient estimation for A star and B star Great. based on observation. Yeah, please, please continue. That's great. Yeah, thank you. So I think 
uh, the autonomous vehicle, the, the determining the coefficients for the kinematics is a good example of the system identification problem. And um, this is actually a related to the project I, I've been uh, doing uh, I've been uh, doing with uh, Samsung uh, these days. So there are two aspects of, uh, as Hong pointed out, there are two aspects of learning system parameters. So uh, basically, uh, uh, we choose a bunch of different control actions to and uh, uh, observe different control actions. Uh, Execute a bunch of different control action and observe the car, uh, the state sequence. So, if it's done with a fixed data set or a fixed uh, parameter, uh, and there's no uh, there's no information is added to our data, then this uh, and, uh, so, and such a uh, learning problem is called offline learning. Uh, on the other hand. If the data is being collected in real time, and and the, the estimation uh, is uh, estimation changes over time, um, that can cover the situation that uh, the a, the true parameter a star and b star changes. For instance, uh, at a certain at certain of, uh, during the certain amount of time, the system parameter is maintained as a one and b one. And for and for some reason, it can change to uh, different system parameter A2 and B2. And once it changes, then different type of uh, data will be collected, so that there is a chance chance to update uh, 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 the different value for the estimation uh, once you have once you start to have different uh, different type of uh, data. And uh, and such a process is called online learning. Uh, now, uh, let us move on to Bayesian system identification. Uh, and the simplest form of the, uh, the system identification problem is the one with, without the control, uh, control. And this is called uh, uncontrolled dynamics. So in estimation, estimating uh, um, a, the true system parameter A star, um, the stability of A star and the type of noise and the length of time horizon and the number of trajectories we use are critical factors. So number of trajectories is often called a uh, roll out and it means that, uh, uh, it means the following, it means that uh, the following. So to, uh, using a sequence of control action, we can, do, we can find, we can find, uh, we will observe a trajectory. And then we can repeat the process for, for example, large n times, then it will definitely um, increase the efficiency of the estimation. And uh, one classical approach for the system identification problem uh, comes from uh, the minimization, uh, minimizing uh, the difference between the next uh, state and the expected next state without the, the, the noise. And this is called uh, least square estimation, as uh, all of you know. And let me quickly uh, give you uh, some here, uh, the introduce some previous uh, notable works. Well, uh, there's a typo here. So very, very recently, uh, Oimak and George provide uh, square, one over square root of T estimate for sta stable, stable A star using a using only a trajectory, only, only a one trajectory. Uh, one over square root of T estimate uh, estimation means that A star minus the least square solution is uh, somewhat bounded by uh, one over square root of T. And uh, then the, in the analysis, the critical assumption is that uh, the noise is Gaussian and the, the state uh, the, the system parameter, the true system parameter is uh, stable. That uh, means that we cannot really apply that's the, the methodology, the, the theory to unstable A star, which results in the exploding um, the, the state trajectory. Uh, very recently, Simchos, uh, not very recently, uh, the, uh, uh, 
may, uh, almost in parallel. Uh, seem to with with uh, prove that prove that uh, under sub Gaussian noise assumption, the estimation, the least square estimation, uh, satisfies this probabilistic bound. Uh, with some constant c1 and c2. So this seems to be very nice uh, result because it has it, it provides the high probability guarantee of the concentra high probability guarantee of the estimation of the true system parameter a hat t. But uh, what I think uh, 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 the part the part that needs to be improved is is that uh, the the parm uh, the the, the the constant c1 and c2 is problem uh, this uh, is problem dependent uh, are problem dependent which means that the constant c1 and c2 comes come from the constant right here but uh, thinking that the xt is a uh, data uh, finding such a constant uh, gamma bar will be quite tricky So there is actually a reason why they introduced the uh the con the, the the constant bound for uh the the positive definite matrix uh, defined by the, the the data. Uh using this we can really find the, the melting uh we can uh, the, the 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 analysis can really enjoy the uh, martingale property of the, the sequence. And this the 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 one of the tricky one, one of the challenging challenging the parts uh in analyzing algebra problem is that the sequence is correlated the the next state is always determined by the uh, the the previous state um mm, uh in, in other words the uh, the states are coupled so the uh, the analysis uh, is sometimes uh, quite mm, uh, not straightforward so by introducing the very unnatural but powerful property, we can really make uh, the, uh, induce the martingale property of the sequence the trajectory. Uh, can I uh, clarify yeah. one point from the previous one? Also for uh, everyone, especially the students, is that when you take the minimization problem uh, among mm -hmm. the matrices I, right? I mean, yeah, for yeah, those right. authors, um. What is the class of I that they are considering? I mean, just any matrix. So it's optimization over any matrix. I see. Oh, that's yeah. that would be very costly, right? Yeah, it is costly. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Uh, as an alternative, um, uh, we took a Bayesian uh, aspect to approximate the appro uh, to approximate the true system parameter a and b. So this is actually a star and b star. So now we consider instead of uh, uncontrolled system, we consider the control system determined by the true system true un uh, true unknown system parameters a star and b star. Uh, for this, uh, uh, let me introduce a the uh, the some notations. Uh, for the simplicity, uh, the reason why the uh, this notation is simply comes from writing the dynamics into this form x t u t. So this way we can really write uh, x, the dynamics in uh, like this. And let's say, uh, uh, and then the uh, the matrix large theta. Uh, we, we vectorize the ve matrix large uh, large large theta, uh, and the vectorization of large theta is uh, oh I, I I wrote here is denoted by small theta so that it lies in uh, it's a a single vector. So uh, using this notation. We can really uh, rewrite the uh, the dynamics in this form, and um, if we uh, if uh, the noise has PDF denoted by PW, then we can really uh, we can uh, think of the probability of having this event. So 
uh, using the the notation just introduced, we can write the the probab probability. Uh, we can really uh, consider the probability of the 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 uh, probability of having this. If uh, no, the PDF is known. Uh, he, here's a uh, assumption imposed on the noise. So uh, it's, it seems quite uh, restrictive, but uh, in this, uh, this assumption uh, uh, relaxes the Gaussian assumption at, uh, at up to certain level. So the, uh, the, the assumption is that the, um, mm, the p the, the probability density function of noise is a strongly low strongly low concave, and moreover, uh, the mean is assumed to be zero, and uh, the covariance uh, is a uh, assumed to be positive definite. So, uh, now let me introduce the uh, uh, remind you of Bayes theorem, uh, which. Uh, says that posterior is proportional to prior times the likelihood. So exploiting the Bayes theorem, we can really think of the, the probability distribution of the theta uh, 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 we can write the probability of distribution of theta by the likelihood times uh, likelihood, likelihood times, likelihood times, likelihood, likelihood times, and uh, likelihood times prior. And uh, we have the, and we 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 saw that the the first part is uh, can take form of this. Uh, we have the uh, as a result, uh, we have the recursive relation for the. Uh, for the posterior this posterior probability uh, function uh, p theta given the history. Yeah, I I, I think for the yeah. Bayesian theorem, not many people mm -hmm. in the audience would know. Ah. you would need to explain yeah. in the layman term. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so give 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 an example for people. I mean, like oh yeah 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 sure. sure. So x t plus one. Xt plus one, the next state is determined by uh, determined by theta. So let me just be a, be a, a bit informer times the uh, current state. Actually, the current state Zt involves the state and action and noise. So let us think of think about the the distribution of theta. If theta is close to theta star then xt plus one minus theta times zt is likely, is, it, it should be really close to distribution of w uh, the, the, the noise distribution. And what if theta, if theta deviates from theta star, then the discre discrepancy between the left-hand side and right-hand side will get large. So the, this Bayes theorem uh, tries to capture uh, this phenomena. This is uh, very, uh, I would say, the equivalent to uh, uh, the situation where we are tossing coin 10 times and had, uh, six heads and four tails. And let us say the probability of having head is theta, then, and the coin is fair, so the prior of the coin, prior distribution for, for coin is Gaussian. Then the likelihood is simply uh, theta to power six times one minus theta to power uh, four with n choose uh, ten choose four ten choose six. And posterior distribution is simply uh, the distribution uh, of the, uh, the, the PDF of theta that also reflects the uh, prior information of theta. So if uh, theta, uh, since theta is assumed to have Gaussian distribution with a center that uh, uh, one half, either be something like this, 2.5 squared. 
So this is our posterior. Yeah, please, let's go ahead. Yeah. Yep, thank you. Uh, and for generality, we simply assume that prior or uh, the a prior, uh, there's no, uh, uh, the prior information of theta uh, is uh, comes from the normal distribution uh, centered at zero. And the next part is one of the key part in the algorithm. So I will, intro, so I will introduce control gain matrix K1 and K2 that satisfy uh, this condition. Uh, here, uh, let us assume that M, M is equal to N. And the re uh, this is called, um, so I call this a mixing argument. And by, by mixing um, two control gain matrices, uh, we, can, um, uh, we, can, uh, we can avoid the degeneracy. So let's, uh, to, to, be, to be more precise, precise uh, let me disregard the second part and let us look, look at the rank of this matrix. So as you can see, this is narrow matrix. So the, 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 this matrix is rank deficiency. So that there's no way to guarantee the minimum val eigenvalue of this matrix to be strictly greater than zero. And the motivator from the uh, obtaining the minimum, um, uh, minimum cost uh, I design a uh, control action, uh, control action by uh, uh, using K1 and K2. So the uh, rough idea is to apply control action U1 and U2 alternatively up to time T. I repeat the process n times to generate n dependent trajectories and, and it, it, which is called, and we have, uh, which is called that we have n row out. So here's the algorithm. So, so for each roll out denoted by small l, uh, we let the trajectory proceeds up to, uh, proceeds to uh, up to time t, and we repeat the process large uh, larger times. Sorry, large n times. And along the way, uh, we choose control action. Uh, we alternate the control actions. So, uh, mm, so now um, we can think of the probability of theta, probability of theta uh, when you execute that algorithm. So, uh, recalling the posterior is defined to be some of uh, the multiplication of prior and likelihood and the taking logarithm will give us the this uh, the equation of uh, consisting of addition of prior and likelihood. So this each, uh, each term in the sigma denotes the likelihood. So that will that really tells us uh, how likelihood our current event, uh, how, how likely uh, how, how likelihood uh, we have the current uh, event. So again, when theta um, theta is theta is close to troop system parameter theta star. So understand. Uh, let, 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 let me think of the the the, the distribution of theta. So if theta is close to theta star then this probability uh, this this will be uh, this will be like this will be uh, likely to uh, this is the this qu this quantity is high, highly likely to be concentrated around zero because we have the highest probability the pw has the highest value around zero since pw is uh, log concave centered at zero so this sigma, real two sigma in, in, uh, in front of likelihood really adds up to, uh, adds up the likelihood of the likelihood, likelihood of our current event or current situation. So 
So, uh, for uh, so our roughly, uh, very roughly, we expect to U tilde star to be concentrated around the true system parameter theta star. So in extreme case, ex in extreme case, if U star or U uh, U tilde is a Dirac measure around theta star, then the estimation is just perfect. But uh, uh, the, because of the random noise, this this uh, will never happen. Instead of that, if estimation is uh, conducted uh, nicely, then P theta, the posterior distribution of theta, or the potential uh, associated U tilde will concentrate around theta star. So this, the, 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 the shape of graph is de definitely determined by the type of noise and the type, type and type of noise or the or, uh, properties, uh, analytic properties of noise, system noise. So, uh, so now let us, uh, uh, let me introduce a, the, the likelihood, um, at uh, at uh, else or out, at else or out, and uh, I also introduce a um, uh, a so called preconditional preconditional matrix uh, defined like this. This is actually um, uh, this consists of uh, data collected up to time t. Uh, block di uh, block diagonal uh, matrix is used uh, uh, to simplify the analysis. So the critical part is that uh, uh, the more con if you you tilde you tilde theta, which is defined through this relation, if convex, uh, if the curvature of U tilde theta gets larger, then we are likely to have probably distribution of theta concentrated uh, around theta star. That's the that's actually one of the most important parts, and that is actually quite natural expectation because we are um um uh. Uh, because we want uh, we uh, uh, the, the 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 likelihood is uh, likelihood uh, is uh, to likely likelihood function is expected to be centered around the true system parameter theta star. So uh, we can actually have the uh, the the the. Uh, the curvature property of the let us say uh, let us call this ut potential. So the put the we can we can derive the lower bound for potential in terms of p introducible, and uh, you'll see why we need uh, such a quantity when you measure uh, the the curvature of the potential. So differentiating uh, the potential with respect to theta right here. So so. When you differentiate with respect to theta, so ZS pops, uh, ZS pops up in the form of chronicle delta, um, a chronicle delta multiplication like that. So uh, using the log concavity of P, uh, uh, we can derive the, 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 the relation above. Uh, Moreover, I, I, I think you are nearly mm -hmm. over time. Can you mm -hmm. <laughs> wrap up yeah, yeah, yeah. the ideas and yeah. Yeah, sure. Thank you. So the um we can take uh, expectation of the, the likelihood to get a U and also uh we can uh derive the the, the lower bound for the curvature of U. So summing them up, uh we have the the, the growth of the curvature of the expected potential u. So as, as, uh, as noted, 
U is the quantity is, is a quantity that really determines the curvature, uh, the the how how uh, how much theta is concentrated is at some point. So if U has very large curvature, then P the, the density function will be really sharp like this. So that's and that's actually quite uh, that's aligned to, with our insight because uh, the large T means that we are collecting more data. Once you collect more data, we are likely to have um, to have um, um, uh, accurate estimation. So the let me uh, wrap things up uh, with uh, the main theorem. So the the main theorem is that uh, the the posterior distribution is actually centered around the true system parameter, and the estimation maximum maximum estimate maximum a posterior estimator is actually concentrated on the true system parameter as well, and the key component for this analysis is Bernstein von Mises theorem, which is um, parallel version of asymptotic property of likelihood function. And this is the experimental result. So the red line you know, over here it uh, indicates the, uh, the 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 performance of uh, the better perf the, indicates that uh, our algorithm performs better than the classical ones. So I think I can stop here. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think I should have not spent that much time on the preliminary part in the accurate part. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Uh, we're going to stop the recording mm -hmm. and then we can chat sort of uh, mm -hmm. informally. Mm -hmm. Let me stop the recording first.